together while the choir comes down. Let your neighbor know you're glad to see them. We have visitors coming in. Church, make room for them. Make them feel welcome. Praise God. We thank God for a good Lord's day. Ages four to eight. You can go across the hall at this time. Remain standing. Grab your hymn book. Let's take a hymn book, turn to page 113. We'll sing the first, second, and last of Glory to His Name.
deserves all the glory, don't he? Amen. We are what we are by the grace of God, but I'm thankful for Jesus, amen, that came and took our place. Amen. Became sin for us, and I'm thankful for his goodness to us and died for us that we could have life and have life more abundantly. Well, it's good to be in the Lord's house. It's good to see you this morning. And I look over and I scan the, the uh, congregation. I see there's some folks I didn't get to speak to or wave at, but we don't do that intentionally. We are humbled and we're honored that you're here today and we're thankful. Church, if you have a visitor sitting near you, please make them feel welcome. And church, guess what? You can even fellowship with each other. Amen. You can tell each other you're glad to see each other. Amen. Me and my two sisters, we used to get in fights and arguments. And uh, worser, worser than the whipping was if my daddy made us hug each other's neck. I'd rather take another whooping sometimes, and they'd had two. But it ain't going to kill you to shake your brother or sister's hand and say, boy, it's good to see you. I ain't seen you since Wednesday night or Sunday night. So uh, fellowship with each other. Amen. We're glad to see you. And also you that are watching by means of live stream, thank you so much for watching. And if you are in the area and you are physically able to go to church, we'd love to see you right here in the Sanctuary of Bible Baptist Church. Our information is on the site that you are on. Uh, brother Larry, did they take care of that car situation? Do I need to announce that? There, there was a black Chrysler Pacifica out there with one of the doors, back door open. Uh, had a Florida tag. If that belongs to you, you may want to go check that out. I wanted to mention that. Uh, but we're going to open the service up with prayer, and we do have much to pray for. Do continue to pray uh, for uh, Sister Ann Man's family. Ken Lawson went home to be with the Lord. His service is tomorrow. And I'm going to go ahead and make this announcement. Uh, we will be helping uh, serve a meal. And uh, if you could have that food here uh, I didn't even think of a time to have food here. She told me, I'm gonna have, I might have to look at my text here in a minute, uh, but I'm going to have to look at my text. Y'all hang on with me. Don't do as I do, amen. Do as, do as I say do, amen. Amen. All righty, so we need food here probably by 4 o'clock, and then uh, someone will take it over to Montlow Creek Baptist Church. Uh, so if you can have food here by 4 o'clock, we'd appreciate that. Uh, very much. That'd be, be a blessing. And uh, if, if you can help out there, we thank you so much for that. But remember them. Also, some of you may not remember George and Sarah Tesnier. Miss Sarah passed away. Her, her, they were receiving friends at Eggers from 4 to 6 tonight. And of course, her service is tomorrow at 11. So remember them, that God give them grace and help in these days. But again, continue to pray for Miss Joe uh, Carty. She'll be going uh, to see a surgeon tomorrow. So let's pray about that. Miss Amelia Moore, LaVon, Brother LaVon Dickey with scans and things he's got going on. Also, uh, Donna Townsend. Uh, Brother Tim Jett needs prayer. I failed to talk to the to men in the prayer room about that. He, he needs prayer. We'll, we'll go farther with that in here a little later. Jay Cagle, Legan Black, or Earl Gosselin, Wayne Alma Hope, Jerry Cantrell, uh, Patsy Hayes, Judy Kirkman, Donald Ravan, uh, Jeanette Phillips and her mother, uh, Kathy Kerr and Vivian Howard, Francis McSwain, uh, Miss Ada Green, she needs prayer and pray for her family as well. Uh, Tony Ballou, uh, also to mention Tim Jett, Melvin Linda Ballou, also uh, Preacher David and Brother John, they'll be leaving after service going to Kentucky today, so let's pray for them. Uh, for safety on the road, Maria McCarty, Evelyn and Dan Jones, Chris Honeycutt, Miss Shirley Crocker has a procedure tomorrow. Uh, as, let's remember her, Randy Cooper, uh, Jesse Deal, uh, Brother Bud Wilson, Billy Close, Linda Short, uh, also uh, Bobby Mann, Caleb Brackett, uh, let's pray for him. Also, Donald Grigg, uh, that's Miss Shirley Fisher's brother. He's done heat and air for a lot of us. He's having a heart procedure tomorrow. So let's remember him as well, that God help him. Also, Jason Rollins, uh, it was in the motorcycle wreck. Let's do pray for him. Lord, help him in a special way. Continue to pray for the Atlanta O'Sullivan family as well, that God touched them. And also, Sister Lynn Fowler's family and the Phillips family also, that God be with them. If you have it unspoken, all right, let's bow for prayer. Father, we do love you this morning. And we love you because you first loved us and you gave yourself for us to be the propitiation for our sin and not our sin only, but the sin of the world. And we're thankful that we can come to your house and worship. And God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in the truth. And we pray, Lord God, you put your hand upon the service. You put a hedge around us today. 
And Father, with the Spirit of God, for Jesus' sake, we pray that you take full control of this service. Get us out of the way, dear God. And Lord, you manifest your presence. In every request, we pray that you'd meet the needs of the hour. But Lord, more than anything, if there's one here lost that don't know you as their Savior, that Lord, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ would shine unto them. And they'd be saved before it's eternally too late. And Father, we commend the service into your hand. Bless every aspect of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, quickly, by way of announcements, don't forget, choir, uh, May the 1st, we will be singing at Manor Baptist Church in Spartanburg. Please mark that on your calendar. And again, the services for uh, Ken Lawson, they're receiving friends tomorrow at Ingleside Baptist Church from 2 to 3.30. And the service is at 3.30 at Ingleside Baptist Church, so please uh, remember that. Also, Brother uh, Wayne Stafford asked us to announce his fifth Saturday youth meeting at Pilgrim's Way Baptist Church, so keep that marked on your calendar. If you, if you want to go, be a part of that. And then, uh, let's see here. Uh, me and Brother Jonathan, we preached last week. We're not going to announce that again because if you show up at these churches, there won't be nobody there this coming week. Uh, sign language uh, Thursday at 6.30. Don't forget the, the food box. Bring food for that. Kentucky items as well. And then the, uh, the men's this, month, uh, this coming month, the second Monday, uh, the men's uh, fellowship and Bible uh, uh, devotion. And then this coming month, the ladies will have theirs on Tuesday, the second Tuesday. Uh, so uh, remember that at 6.30. All righty. Don't forget the services tonight. Don't forget youth devotions at, at, at uh, 5.30. Prayer rooms at 5.45. Church at 6 p.m. All right. Let's all stand. Our ushers are coming. We're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. You give that which belongs to God. The tithe is the Lord's. And uh, get all these preliminaries out of the way so we can worship the Lord this morning. Of course, tithing is a part of worship. Amen. You give that which belongs to the Lord. All right, Brother Carl. Well, God, we come tonight, today, Lord, just thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house, Father. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday school hour this morning, Father, Lord. I ask that you be our pastor and you reach us to us this morning, Father. I pray, Lord, your hearts be open and receptive to your word this morning, Father. I pray you use it in my special way. We pray, Lord, when we come to the lost, that today might be the day, Lord, to come to the Savior for this church house, Father. I pray, Lord, for all the prayer requests. You know each one what's standing need of, Father. Was lost love with, I just pray God just come from all way he can, Lord. Bless this offering, those that have it, those not. Lord, it was your work here. We'll give you the praise and honor in Christ's name. I do pray. Amen. All right, let's take a hymn book, turn to page 264. We'll sing the first, second, last verse of At the Cross.
that walks the dark hills, the ways, the byways. He walks through the billows of life's troubled sea. He walks through the cold, dark night, shadows of midnight. God walks the dark hills just to guide you and me. God walks the dark hills to guide my footsteps. He walks everywhere by night and by day. He walks in the silence God walks the dark hills just to show me the way. God walks in the storm, the rain, the sunshine. He walks on the billows of glimmering light. He walks through the mountains high, cross rivers through valleys. God walks the dark hills, cause he loves you and me. God walks the dark hills to guide my footsteps. He walks everywhere, by night and by day. He walks in the silence, on down the highway. God walks the dark hills, just to show me the way. God walks the dark hills, just to show me the way.
but they never were heard. But I held to God's hand and kept right on trusting in His word. singing this morning uh, folks that's one thing about it we can trust the Lord uh, some of my favorite verses in the Bible is Proverbs 3 5 and 6 to trust in the Lord with all thine heart lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path amen also his Bible tells us that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts so if we are waiting on God to work on our uh, intellect, if we're waiting on God to see it our way or, or to do it in our timing, we may be disappointed. Uh, but God has perfect timing, and everything He does is perfectly right. And I bless the Lord. Thank God for that good singing today. And I want you to take your Bibles, please, with me just for a moment to the book of Psalm, chapter number 86, Psalm 86. Uh, this is a prayer of David, and I'm actually going to pull out uh, uh, one verse. Uh, of course, most of David's prayers, and I, I say this often when looking at the Psalms, uh, he is in need, he is being attacked, he is being lied on, he is burdened, he is discouraged, he is down and out. And while he's praying, it seems like God just kind of moves in his heart and before he gets done praying, he ends up praising. And, and, and toward the end of this uh, chapter, that's kind of what he's doing. He begins to testify. And he gives in verse 13, he says of Psalm 86, uh, For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Uh, so... David acknowledged that God had shown him great mercy and that God had delivered him from the lowest hell. Now again, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I'm preaching on. I'm going to preach on the thought this morning, hell is real. Uh, hell is real. I, I used to not lean this way, uh, but the more I study the Word of God and see, and I'm not going to go through the other scriptures, but... There are degrees of hell. And so we understand that uh, David wasn't just talking about hell. He's talking about the lowest place of it. He said, in other words, how David saw himself and looking at his own self, he said, I deserve to be in the lowest part, uh, the lowest compartment, the lowest uh, place of hell. And God had delivered me from that place. And folks, what a blessing that is that we can testify. If you've been saved, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, God has saved you from hell. Uh, God has delivered you from hell. And many folks in this day, uh, preacher don't preach on hell. That's, that's really not showing any love, and, and uh, that's really not Christ-like. Well, that is showing love, and it is Christ-like. 
as we studied the Lord Jesus Christ in the four Gospels, that he spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. Now, we understand that heaven's in the Bible more than hell, but Christ preached on hell more than he did heaven. Uh, so if, if you want a preacher that preaches like Jesus, you want a preacher that goes, around, goes by and preaches on hell every now and then. Not because he's trying to hurt anybody, but we're trying to see the Lord save somebody. And folks, I'm thankful the Lord uh, saved me from hell. Hell is a literal place, and we also know heaven is a literal place. Uh, there is a place called heaven. Uh, when John, uh, Jesus said, uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So we know heaven is a place and hell is a place. And the Lord uh, gave us uh, descriptions of those places in the Word of God. And of course, we're not going to uh, preach the whole message out of Luke 16, but the Lord gives us a glimpse of an actual place called hell. And we know, of course, uh, after the tribulation and all, that death and hell, and I'll mention this later, was going to give up the dead that's in them or the people that's in them, and they will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So I want to say to you today that we love you. If you're here today or you're watching by means of live stream, uh, we're not trying to preach something that's not of love. Uh, we love you enough to warn you. We love you enough to tell you. Folks, I give an illustration uh, years ago. Uh, it was supposed to be a true and real illustration of a man that came up on a bridge as it was collapsing. And he got stopped and that bridge collapsed and, and it, went, it went way down there deep. Uh, into a river and he got turned around and he went up about a mile or two up the road and he was trying, he was flagging people down and they would stop and he'd say, don't go any further, that bridge is out, that bridge is out. And uh, some would turn around, most would turn around, but there was one that come by that said, leave me alone. I don't want to hear what you're babbling. I ain't got time to fool with you. And he went on and he went off of that bridge into, into eternity. And so uh, would you say that man that's, that, that that saw that bridge collapse and then turn around and go back and try to wave people down and try to get them to stop, would you say he loved people? I see, hey, that's the same thing I'm doing today. Uh, I understand uh, through the eyes of faith in God's Word. You say, you've never physically seen hell. Uh, I've never physically seen heaven either. But through the eyes of faith and believing the Word of God, I know it's a literal place. And so out of love today, I'm, I'm just like that man. I'm standing here today in the pulpit trying to wave you down and say, hey, you don't have to go there. You can turn around. You can repent and go in a different direction. You can get off the broad road that leads to destruction, and you can get on the narrow road that leads to life. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can get on the right road. Christ is the right road. It's narrow because it's a one way. Jesus is the only way. But I'm glad the doors of salvation and the call of salvation is still open and still being rang out. You can get born again today. You don't have to go to hell. By the way, it wasn't even created for us. God created hell for the devil and his angels. It wasn't even created for us. But those that reject Christ, those that reject Christ will die in their sin and go to hell. I can say this, it's not God's will that you go to hell. He says it, it's not my will that any perish, but all come to repentance. Well, God ain't going to send me to hell. He don't, that's a choice you make. We've got to understand eternity is there. Where you spend it is up to you. There's only two choices. Just like growing up, we had two choices at supper time. Take it or leave it. Amen. As you can tell, I took it. Amen. That's right. It, it, it wasn't baby what you want. It was baby here it is. Eat it or starve. And folks, the same way, there's only two choices, heaven or hell. You receive Christ. Receive yourself a sinner. Amen. I was going to preach all this at the end, but I'll preach it now. Amen. I thank God for the gospel. 
We just come through. We just come through Easter that Christ died for your sin. He died for our sin and was buried and rose again the third day, victorious over death, hell in the grave. The gospel. Here it is the gospel. We get saved by believing the gospel. And folks, I'm glad that God sent Jesus and Jesus died for us and was buried and rose again. Why? Because we were all born sinners. I know this is elementary, but this is where the Spirit of God is leading today. Uh, we was all born in sin. Nobody was born spiritual. Amen. Nobody, none of us was born spiritual. None of us was born alive. You say, I was born alive, uh, maybe physically, but none of us was born alive spiritually. We were born dead in trespasses and sin. And because of Adam, wherefore as by one man, that's Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed on all men, for all have sinned. So uh, in Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. And I'm thankful, thank God, for all have sinned. But God had a plan through the man, Christ Jesus. And he said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad God is still in the saving business. So hell, we live in a time where it is scoffed at, where it is made fun of, where people use the word as an everyday slang word and not realizing that it's an actual place and people actually are there right now who have died in rejection of Christ. And if, and if, if you don't get saved and trust Christ, that's where you're going. And if I hadn't trusted Christ and got saved, that's where I'd be going. But I'm glad Jesus made a way. We scoff at it. We use the name as a slang word and we, we throw it around just like it's just the word. No, it's not just the word, it's a place. Hell is real. And again, I love you today. I love you enough to tell you about it. Now, if you have a little scratch piece of paper or you write in the leaflet of your Bible, uh, you can write the word hell. And don't write it this way, write it that way. H-E-L-L. -L. So you understand I got four points to you today. We're going to do an acrostic of this word, hell, and show you today that hell is a real place. Notice, first of all, the H. Hell is hot. Now, now again, I'm not talking about July and August hot. As a matter of fact, that's cold compared to hell. Now again, we could turn through the Word of God, and I had planned on doing that, and I may do it here in a moment, but yet we understand hell is hot. And hey, the Bible says in Luke 16, 24, that the rich man that died and went to hell was tormented in the flame. Uh, that word torment, we find synonyms for the word torment means torture, anguish, misery, agony, to be vexed, sore. And so hell is real, the, the tormented in the flame. You know, I, I, as I was reading, uh, it's amazing, Brother Jonathan, how the Word of God is inexhaustible. And, and I'm, I'm running a rabbit here, so y'all hang with me. But I got to reading over this, and, and, uh, and something hit my mind is that hell is a selfish place. Now, I have preached this for over 30 years, this, this subject. And I've always mentioned, I'm going to mention it today, trying to let the Spirit of God do what He... What he I always mentioned the concern of this rich man for his five brothers. He, he, he asked Abraham, go send somebody. I don't want them to come into this place of torment. And, but, you know, it's amazing to me, the very first thing this man was concerned about was himself. As soon as he got there in torments, he said, Father Abraham, would you just take the tip of your finger and dip it in water? And let, that, let, a, let a drop hit my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I am, I am, I am, I am. Folks, you understand, selfishness comes from hell. 
selfishness is a, is a there's nobody fellowshipping in hell. There's, there's nobody worried about uh, or concerned about uh, their friend beside them in hell. It's a selfish place. The only, the only person that somebody in hell is thinking about is themselves. Be careful if you're a selfish person here. Sometimes we need to think of others, don't we? But anyway, that rabbit's dead. He's gone. I've eaten him. He's, he, I'm sopping gravy right now. So we see hell is hot. He said, I'm tormented in this flame. His tongue needed to be cooled. We understand he saw the torture of it. He was at least, uh, there come a time he was concerned, not with those there with him, but with those that were coming behind him. He already knew there's people coming behind me. I have family that's in the same path, living the same life, doing the same stuff, rejecting Christ just like me. They're coming, they're coming. I need somebody to stop them. Folks, you and I today, Brother Bud's devotion this morning about being an example. Hey, if we don't tell them now, if we're not a witness now, and they go to hell, they won't have, hey, that nobody's going to help them. Hell is hot. He's tormented. He said, I'm tormented in this flame. It's not a vacation. It's not something, well, I, we're going to part. No, you're going to be in anguish and torment. It's going to be a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. It's an awful, awful, hot, wicked, vile place. I have mixed emotions because when I think about hell and I, re I preach about hell in this context of Scripture, I'm glad I'm not going. I rejoice in the fact David in the text, he rejoiced that he was delivered from the lowest hell. He rejoiced and I rejoice in that and give God all the glory that he looked beyond my fault and he saw my need. Oh, I didn't deserve, I didn't deserve to be delivered from hell. You didn't deserve to be delivered from hell, but God, who was rich in mercy. And David rejoiced in that fact, and I rejoice in that fact. But at the same time, my heart and my stomach gets a little queasy because I know I have friends and family on their way there. I have friends and family on my prayer list that I pray for often, if not every day, that God would save their soul and they're not saved yet, realizing that they could take their last breath any moment or the trump of God could sound and it'd be too late. I, boy, that, that, that bothers me. But the Jerry used to sing a song, I want us to be together in heaven. And through that song, it talks about you can have this and have that. You can have the best that money can buy. But if you have not been saved, all that ends at the grave. All that mess, all that, oh, you may be popular and you may be rich and you may have stuff and you may have this and have that and think, whoa, I've got it all. But all that stops right there. When you take your last breath, that stuff, hey, that position, that pride, all that stuff, it ends right there. I want us to be together in heaven. Amen. I want us to be together in heaven. You know, it's amazing, and again, I'm running rabbits, but it seems like when mama goes, when mama passes, the family unit, and I'm not, I, 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 I make myself responsible for a lot of things uh, because we're all guilty, but it seems like the family kind of drifts. And I have one particular cousin that growing up, he, he and I was very, very close. We were close in age, and if we had anything at Granny's house, we, we, he'd come to my house, I'd go to his. We was close, and every time we see each other, we have the very same discussion. And every time we see each other, there's a, either a casket in the room. We have the very same discussion. This has got to be, we've got to do better than this. Now this is the only time we see each other and our family's leaving. Because when we're together at a funeral, most time it's a close friend or a family member and we're, we're leaving. We had this discussion not long ago, sitting in a funeral chapel. But we seem like we don't do anything about it. Our heart, we want to be together. 
my mind and heart, I can't believe that I couldn't pick up the phone and call him. And I, I, I wouldn't have the, the opportunity to fellowship with him. But see, with family, with parents and, and family that's already uh, crossed over, I have a sense of joy. Even though I miss them, I have a sense of joy because I know reunion's coming. They left with a testimony. They knew the Lord. I know the Lord and I know they're in heaven and I know I'm headed there. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Bearing a loved one, knowing, knowing that they denied Christ, knowing that they publicly said they had wanted no part of salvation, didn't want any part of being saved. And folks, I don't believe anybody fully understands the repercussions of that statement. I don't think people really understand how horrible it is to say that. And to really think that, I don't want any part of Christ. What you're saying is, I don't, I don't want any part of eternal life. I don't want any part of heaven. I, 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 what I want is, I want you to leave me alone so I can live it up and die and go to hell. That, that's unconsciously, that's what they're saying. They don't realize they're saying it, but that's what they're saying. When they say, I don't want Jesus, I don't, I don't want you to talk to me about Christ, they hang up the phone on you. Talking to a man this week, I was sitting in his living room, and he was telling me about some of his kin folks that he, he has tried to witness to, and he said, they'll hang up the phone on you. He said, they'll, they'll, they'll slam the phone down on you, they don't want to hear what you got to say, and, they'll, and, and I'm sitting there thinking, man, they don't realize what they're doing. They don't, and he'll say, this, I don't want to hear that mess, I don't want a part of that. Click. I don't want no part. I don't want that. And what they're saying is, you know what? I, I, I don't care Jesus took my sin to the cross. I don't care that Jesus died in my place. It, I don't care. When they, when, they, when they make a statement like that, I don't want any part of him. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to know that. And hang a phone up or cut you off. That's what they're saying. I don't care my sin debt's been paid. I don't care if somebody suffered the vilest of deaths that I can have life and have it more abundantly. I do not care. I don't care, preacher. I don't care that I'm not going to heaven. I don't care that I'm not going to see my saved loved ones. I don't care if I'll never see my dead mom again. I don't care if I'll ever see my siblings again. I don't care. I don't care. Click. Here's what I want. I want you to leave me alone. Let me live it up. And I'm going to go to hell and suffer bleeding and suffer and die for the, the rest of my life in hell. The second death, dying but never dying. Can you get a hold of that? Suffering and dying but never dying. That's what I want. That's what I want. You say, preacher, you know that's not what they want. That's what they're saying. If you're here today, if you're here today, I just seen you in, man. I just I seen you. If, if, you, if, you, if you could talk to them right now in hell, they'd say, well, I wish I hadn't... Hadn't said that. They're not saying it audibly, but that's what they're saying. I don't want Jesus. I don't want Jesus. I don't want eternal life. I'd rather have my time here to party, to dope, to carouse, to drink. I'd rather have my time here taking the Lord's name in vain and cussing Him and, and, and fighting and, and, and just doing whatever I want to do. Or, you know what? I don't, I don't drink. I don't dope. I don't do all these things. But I'm setting my ways and I just want to sit in my living room and live my life like I want to live it. Leave me alone. What they're saying is, I don't want Jesus and the eternal life that comes with it. I want it. I'd rather have hell. See, whether you agree with the subject I'm preaching on, whether you think it's a real place or not, it's not going to change the fact that it's in the Word of God and the Bible says it's, it is real. My question is, do you know the Lord? Do, do you really want to go to a place called hell? Do you really want to be in torment? Do you really want that? 
want to know how far I've gotten. Look at the E. Hell is hot. Hell is everlasting. You understand, there's only one time. And we're not, again, my time's gone. I'm, I got all this scripture. But there's only one time in Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 13. Only one time those in hell ever get out. One time. One time. At the white throne judgment. When the sea gives up the dead, when, when hell gives up those that are in it, and they stand before God, and the books are open, the, book of, the Lamb's book of life, book of remembrance, the book, the Bible, they'll be judged by all that. The books will be open. The books will be open. And He'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. And then you'll be took to the lake of fire. It's everlasting. Only for that one speck of time, it's everlasting. Look at the first L. Hell is a place of longing. Longing for water. Longing uh, to get a word to family. Longing for rest. Revelation 14, 11 said... There's no rest day or night in hell. It's not a place of peace. It's not a place of tranquility. It's not a place of ease. Gnashing of teeth. We don't have time to study all of that out this morning, but folks, people are gnashing teeth at one another. And I mean, it's, I mean folks, it's a, it's a, I, don't, I, I don't like horror movies, never have. I think you need to be careful with that stuff. You put it on at your house, you just say, devil, come on in here. Amen. Well, I love them things, preacher. They, boy, they excite. You better be careful messing with horror movies and sorcery stuff and stuff. That's demonic. You need to read your Bible. You say, devil, come on in, come on in. But it, hey, the, most, the ho most horrible, horrible horror movie you've ever seen, don't compare. Don't compare. So we see hell is hot, hell is everlasting, hell is, uh, there's a longing, and then also hell is a place of lowest company. Now, I am going to turn to Revelation chapter number 21, verse number 8. He said, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. There's your company. I know some folks that are not, not saved, but they're honest. And they don't like liars. Are you listening? I know some people that's not saved, but... They're not murderers. And they don't want to, and surely they don't want to be around a murderer. They won't be around somebody that's worshiping a false god or a sorcerer. They don't want to be around somebody that's abominable. That means, that means ab abhorrent or detesting, scum, wicked, vile. They don't want to be around people like that. But if you reject Christ and go to hell, that's your company. That's your new family. That's your new roommate. Amen. Listen to me now. It's the lowest of company. What an awful group of people to have to live and spend eternity with. <laughs> you telling me that you have a choice to live in heaven with Jesus and save loved ones? A place where sin cannot defile? A place of perfection? A place of pure beauty? A place, I mean, I mean, Wow. No need of the S-U-N because the S-O-N gives life to it. Can you imagine a street of pure gold having a mansion? I know some perverted versions say rooms, but I'm getting more than a room house. I'm getting a mansion. Amen. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Amen. That word means dwelling places, not rooms. Amen. 
When you talk about where you live, you talk about your place, you're talking about more than your house. You're talking about all of that. Your place. Amen. I'm going to prepare a place. There's a mansion on your place. <laughs> Amen. Whoop. You mean to tell me you'd rather, you'd rather spend eternity in hell, suffering, and I, I, mean, un, I mean suffering, with this kind of company for eternity than go to heaven? Surely not. If you choose that over heaven, it's, it's the marbles loose. Something's missing. Something's wrong. And in this life, in this life, is where you have to make the decision. In this life. I, I, I don't care what, what someone says about purgatories and, and, and holding places. And that, that's, that's, you, not, you won't find that in your Bible. The moment Lazarus died in chapter 16, he woke up in paradise. The moment the rich man died, he woke up in hell. Now, if it was a such thing of, as, as a purgatory, don't you think that man with all the money he had had somebody that could go to a priest and give him enough money to pray him out of there so he could go to heaven? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. You're going to choose heaven or hell. Well, I'm not making a choice. Yeah, yeah you're making a choice. If you're, if you're unsaved today and you never trusted Christ as your Savior and you leave here, you've made a choice. You've made a choice. You know what? You could say, you know, I know, I'm, I, know I need to get saved. I see that clearly. I don't want to go to hell. But I'm not coming down here with all these people. I'll do it later on. So you're going to take the risk? You, hey, you, you, you're going to put your own soul at risk? What if you don't make it home? Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Right now. Huh? If you was inside, if you was inside a building, and all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, it was engulfed in flames. And you saw down a hallway a door that leads out of there. And you was in that building that's engulfed in flames with two or three hundred people. Would you be embarrassed to make a dead sprint down that one hallway to get out that door? You, you, would, that, you wouldn't even be thinking about these people. I see a way out. I see a way of escape. And I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I don't care what they say about me. They're going to see me go by them doing 100 miles an hour toward that door, toward that way of escape. You know what? Once you get outside... And that people, then people come out. What if one of them sniggers at you? You don't care. You alive. What, 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 what if one of them says a little something or makes a little comment? You don't care. You alive. You know what you would tell them? I don't care what you say. I'd do it again. I'd do it again. I'd do it all over again. I'd do it again. Folks, that's what's happening here today. Spiritually, hell's real. The Bible says that those without Christ are condemned already because they have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Until you get saved, that's when there is now no condemnation unto you. But you're already condemned, and, the, and, 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 and life is shortening, and, and, and hell is coming. But there's a door there. Jesus said, I am the door. There's a door there. All you got to do is go through the door. All you got to do is walk through. All you got to do is go through Christ. Now you tell me, why should it matter if there's two or three hundred here? 
What does it matter if somebody sniggers or says something? You will be alive. I'm talking about eternal life. Everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world that the world through him might be saved. I wouldn't care if they was, was 500 or 1,000 here. I wouldn't care if, if my high school bully was there. I wouldn't care if, if the president was sitting here. Boy, if he's sitting here, maybe he'd come down. I wouldn't care. It wouldn't bother me. I'd choose life. It's heaven or hell, friend. Both are real. Both are final destinations. You're not going to live forever. As it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. We all have an appointment. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You're not here by accident. God's brought you here, providentially brought you here. Won't you come? Preacher, when I get there, I don't know what to do. You, get, you walk up here, we'll have somebody help you. We'll have somebody take the Bible and show you. See, salvation's simple in that the work and the debt's already been paid by Jesus. And He'll freely save you. You don't, you don't have to go to hell, and surely you don't want to go to hell. God help us. Let's all stand. Miss Lisa's coming to the piano. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed just for a moment. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed just for one moment. As folks are coming to pray, if you, if you have a need or burden, you can come pray. If you have a loved one you want to pray for, you come. But heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking on but me and the Lord. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Folks, we're not in the embarrassing business. We don't do that here. But maybe you're here today. You say, Preacher, why nobody can see you but me and the Lord, of course. Preacher, I don't want you to come and mess with me. I don't want you to I don't want you to embarrass me. And friend, I promise it won't happen. But preacher, I need to be saved, and I know that. I know, I know I'm not ready to meet the Lord. And I saw today that if I don't trust Christ as my Savior and I die, I'm going to hell, preacher. And preacher, I am concerned about it. Would you pray for me, preacher? Oh, the one honest heart that would slip up their hand when nobody can see you. He said, preacher, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me, preacher? I'm not sure I'm ready to meet the Lord. Just slip your hand up. I'll say thank you. You put it right back down. That's as far as I'll go with it. And I won't treat you funny after the service. I, I, I promise you I won't do that. But you hold your hand up so I can see it, and I'll say thank you. You put it right back down. God bless you. I see you. Thank you. You can put your hand down. Thank you. Are there another preacher? I'm not sure I'm ready to meet the Lord. Would you pray for me, preacher? Are there another quickly? Preacher, would you pray for me? I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I'm going to heaven, preacher. I'm concerned about it. Would you pray for me? Are there another quickly? Hold your hand up until I see it. Are there, are there another quickly? Are there another quickly? God bless you. I see you. Thank you. Are there another preacher? Would you pray for me? I'm not sure I'm saved. Preacher, would you pray for me? I'm not sure I'm ready to meet the Lord. I appreciate the two hands that were raised. I do want to go ahead and say this. If, if the Lord's touched your heart, why don't you slip out and I'll have somebody meet you with the Bible on this altar. If you take the first step, you'll be here before you know it. And I'll have someone come with the Bible to help you. But you've got to make that first step. You've got to come. Why don't you do that? Why don't, don't, don't wait. Don't tarry. If the Spirit of God's touched you, today's the day of salvation. Come right now. Come. If you take that step, you'll be here. 
And I promise you, when you walk back to your seat, you'll be glad you did. And we'll rejoice with you. You hear today and say, Preacher, I know without a shadow of a 